Oh, hi, I'm Mike Carroll, and today I'm here to share some secrets with you about one of the most profitable aspects of poker, and I'm not talking about statistics, I'm not even talking about strategy, and I'm certainly not talking about the 20 hours a day I spend running computer simulations. I'm talking about something much different. I'm talking about tells. What are tells? Well, tells are simply your opponent's mannerisms. And by observing them, you can decide once and for all with absolute surety whether they're bluffing, whether they're not bluffing, and you'll know why. Now, I started thinking about this topic a long, long time ago. In fact, before there ever was my book of tells, I had the honor of contributing some words to Doyle Brunson's monumental super system, a course in power poker. And I'd like to read to you now. Thoreau said, the mass of men lead lives of quiet desperation. And I wrote, most people are prevented from living life as they want. In childhood, they're required to do chores they hate. They grow up having to conform at school as adults. They must shake hands they don't want to shake. Socialize with people they dislike. Pretend they're feeling fine when they're feeling miserable. And act in control of situations where, in truth, they're feeling frightened and unsure. These people, the majority of folks you meet every day, are actors. They present themselves to you as people different than they really are. Deep within themselves, they know they are not the same person they pretend to be. On an unconscious level, they think, hey, I'm so phony that if I don't act to disguise my hand, people will see right through me. And that's why the majority of these pitiful people are going to give you their money by always acting weak when they're strong and strong when they're weak. Players are either acting or they aren't. If they are acting, then decide what they want you to do and disappoint them. You know there's a lot of things you need to look for when you're in a poker game. You have to watch your opponent's expressions. You have to watch their body language to see what they're trying to convey to you or trying not to convey to you. There is a profit in the chips. I want you to start observing other players' chips. Well, what good will that do, you wonder? Well, I'm going to tell you right now. What do you know about poker chips? Well, there's something we're going to win. Well, we know that for sure, but there's something more. Always pay attention to the way your opponents stack their chips. Look at this man. Well, that's pretty neat, but what else do we know about it? And what about this other person? Different kind of player. What do we know about these chips? Well, it turns out that stacking chips is not something players usually do to deceive you. It's just part of their nature. And believe it or not, neatly stacked chips like these usually mean a player is very conservative. You shouldn't expect that player to bluff very much or be in with weak hands. But there's something else you need to know about this player and this stack. Do you see those loose chips in front? Those are his winnings. Why is that important? Because usually, if you bet just a little more than those winnings, he won't call. And what about this other guy? Look at this. These chips are all over the place. This guy keeps a messy room. You know that. And you know something else about him? He's going to play recklessly. He's going to play exactly the way those chips suggest. And you should expect him to bluff. You should expect him to play loose hands. And you know all this without ever having played with him before. Caro's Law of Tells number one. Players often stack chips in a manner directly indicative of their style of play. Conservative means conservative. Sloppy means sloppy. 
you know, poker is a game of big pots and small pots and no pots. You can go a long time without winning a pot. But sometimes players can just give you their money and not even know why they're doing it. Now this woman hidden behind the dealer has just won a big pot previously. And now what? Well, she has to stack those chips. And because she has to stack those chips, she is not going to get involved this time with anything but a hand she absolutely has to play. So if she does come out playing this hand, you should sure figure her for a good, strong holding. She is not going to be bluffing. Now going by what we just discussed, let's put this to use. Here the woman decides to play a hand, and because she wants to stack her chips, we know this is a good, solid hand, and it's not a bluff. And there's one other secret we didn't show you on video, but I'm going to tell it to you now. When you have a choice of seats and you don't know anything about the players, you should choose to sit behind the money. Sit behind the money. That means to the left of the player with the money. Why is that? Well, first of all, he's likely to be a loose player. And if he's a loose player, strategy dictates that you sit to his left so that you can win that money. Or there's another possibility that he's simply a good player. And if he's a good player, especially a good aggressive player, you also want to sit to his left. So in either case, if you don't have any other clues to go by and you see somebody with a whole lot of money, you want to sit behind it. When in doubt, sit behind the money. What are you going to do next time the dealer deals you your next card? You're going to look at it, right? Wrong. That is the last thing you should do when you get a card. You know what you should do? You should look at your opponents. Watch how they look at their cards. There's where you'll find the tells. There's where you'll find the story. But if you're looking at your own card, what are you going to see? You aren't going to see anything because you're looking at your own card, and your own card will not change. You can look at it later. Very often, you can get valuable information just by the way your opponents look at their cards. Now, as you watch this, pay particular attention to the man in the middle. He draws one card. And now what happened, and what does it tell you? After the woman draws her three cards, the man in the middle takes one. Now, watch what he does. One. Here's the one, looks at it, puts it down right away. What do we learn from this? Two things. One, we learn that he probably has two pair, not a straight or a flush.